Hello and welcome to Prototex Mastercam 2025 Rollouts. In this video series, we're going to take a look at all the awesome, great new enhancements introduced in the latest version. Don't forget, you can always find the latest information on Prototex website. We now have our 2025 install and update guide PDF available for download and a new video made to show the installation and migration process as well. This series will be broken out into five sections with different uh, core topics. And we're going to start with section one, our general interface enhancements. The first thing we're going to take a look at is a wireframe update. Our arc tangent function has been given a sweep angle to several of the methods. This can be handy depending on how data is given to you. If you need to draw something in this instance, they didn't give us like the height of where this line lies, just that there's 35 degrees of angle sweep. So if I was required to draw that, I could go to my wireframe arc tangent. I have some different methods here. I'm just going to use arc on one entity. I pick the entity I want to be tangent to where to place the arc at this endpoint. And then I've always had to pick which, uh, of the available or possible solutions, which solution do I want? I want this solution. And that in previous versions is where this function ended. What I gained in 2025 is that if I know that sweep angle, I can simply just punch it in now. Now I could draw that next line right out from that endpoint horizontal. The next thing we're going to take a look at is we have a new analyze function. We have the cool new analyze deviation. This is useful if you have models to compare or if you've had to redraw anything for whatever reason, you can now compare the two geometry types to see how much difference there is. So I had to redraw a section of one of these blades and I wanna check out how close they are to each other. On the home ribbon, I can run the new analyze deviation. Now I'm gonna do a surface to surface. I have some color coding here. I'm going to use that. I'll pick all the green and then I'll pick, I want to end selection and then I'll pick the next thing to compare against. It gives me this point grid, red being maximum positive deviation, blue being maximum negative deviation, but at quick glance, it kind of gives me a good idea of how close I am to the original model. Definitely making it easier to double check any rev differences and or redraws. Cool new enhancement in 25. We also see a bunch of awesome new enhancements to solid holes in Mastercam 2025, both in functionality and in selection. Let's take a look. This part is an imported solid. It doesn't have any history. It doesn't have the holes in it. If I go to drill this part, I'll notice my interactive prompt has grown. That means there's more things I can do. I can now window select. If I window select, I'll get some of these radiuses as holes. I'm going to quick jump into advanced and turn off allow split holes. As soon as I select something, I notice another change. Usually when I pick the walls of holes, I would just get a face entity here. It now gives me the entire hole. It's basically as if I had gone to model prep and done my detect hole function, but I haven't. It does it on the fly. I'm going to delete all the holes. I don't know how useful that is. It does pick some of the side holes and whatnot as well. Maybe even cooler yet is I can pick one hole and we're going to call that a seed. And notice here I can say use window selection with a seed. And that's how I seed it. I pick one hole and now if I window, I'll just get the holes that match that. I'm going to delete all again. I can still also control click on the wall of the hole to get all matching diameters as well. That was a great new enhancement added several years ago. I really liked that one. 
And I can pick a different hole type as well. And I'm going to pick a couple different segments. Maybe I pick the wall of that corner bore and the wall of the through hole. I'm going to green check. We also had hole segments added several years ago. This only worked if you had history on the holes and now history is automatically added to the holes as I picked it. So it should generally always work now. They've made some enhancements to this. I now, because I like when I picked multiple holes there, I can now switch between the hole types here. It kind of filters it out. And for these, I didn't pick the entire hole. I just picked that wall so that's active and that's going to affect if I use incremental drilling, that's going to affect the, the depths that, that are in play. So I can see that yellow is active, orange is not selected or not active. Or these I picked in different spots. I have dark orange for not active and light orange for uh, mixed results. You know, I, on one hole I picked that wall, the other hole I picked that wall, and it, it'll, it'll respect that in the tool path with incremental depths. I can also modify it. I could come in here and shift click to pick all that. If I make a modification to what is active, when I move on to the next page, it'll alert me that I've made a change. So I wanna, yep, I wanna keep those changes. And now the incremental calculate from holes lines will be respect those selections. Both the holes are drilled to the bottom. Now let's take a look at process hole, which was just added in a previous version. I'm gonna switch to the other solid Usually I single click to pick a face, double click to pick an entire feature. Process hole doesn't like to work off a face, it wants the whole feature. So when I'm specifically in process hole, I can single click and it does now pick the whole feature. If I am used to double clicking, I can double click as well. Both work. I can also pick, now if I control click, I get all the holes and this solid has the features found in it and this used to be when i control click in previous in the previous version with process hole it would only pick the ones that have the same feature this has been improved now and it will mass pick now even if they're different features in the tree another great enhancement is you do not you need to use find hole once again because as you pick the holes it finds it so another enhancement here with my process hole is I don't need to use, like I mentioned before, model prep, find holes. I can just jump right into the process hole function. New in 2025, I can quickly and easily save or reload from defaults while creating drafting entities. Uh, while I've been able to set defaults in the past, I now have access to it while doing my drafting. Very similar to kind of save and reload defaults in your tool pathing. Mastercam 2025 also gives us a new option in Advanced Display. Advanced Display was added a few years ago. If you haven't checked it out, it's a very useful function. I can color code different types of motion. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to figure out what's going on in a toolpath, especially if there's issues. In 2025, we can now see the tool contact point. This would be in contrast to or in addition to the tool center tip motion. This is going to probably be most useful in 3D and 5-axis tool paths. For instance, this path here, the blue lines represent the center tip of the tool and it looks like the 3D starts well below the face of the surface and then it goes well below the bottom. Well, in these types of cuts, my tip is the blue line and that is not always the contact point or where the tool is cutting so i can access my advanced display options in my view menu or right here in my toolpath manager and i can turn on this new option tool contact point that puts these green lines on the part that's where each of these paths are in contact i can see that that first green line is up at the top of the surface there at the bottom of the radius right behind that orange uh, drive chain and the green patterning stops at the bottom of the surface. So that kind of tells our tools in contact. I could illustrate this in backplot as well. If I take a look in backplot, the center tip of my tool is down the part of ways there. 
if I kind of look at it from another angle, my tool's in contact with the part at about that orange line like was being represented in the contact display. This could be useful in a variety of ways. It can help identify if there's any issues, you know, what's going on or verify, you know, where the tool's actually cutting. For instance, if I created another unified tool path, I'll use the same tool. I'll use a curve cut pattern again. Pick this one face. Last time I used that red point as axis control. This time I'm going to use the chain. The default is start to finish for each contour. This results in a bit of a messy toolpath down near the bottom here. If I have some clues as to what is kind of causing that mess, it helps me to better decide how to fix it. It may take multiple steps to fix, but that doesn't look great. If I take a look at that in Backplot, When I go from chain and I tell it to, you know, from start to end, each cut, it wants to start at the beginning of the chain. So it's aiming the tool at the beginning of the chain. And for that entire cut, it wants to follow the chain because my cut pattern is interrupted, not going all the way around this shape in this small area. Now it wants to follow that entire chain. So I get a lot of tilt changes, changing where the contact point is along the tool. If I go back and look at that with tool contact point, it is maintaining a clean pattern there, but to do that, the tool tip is all over. That isn't ideal, but it kind of gives me some clues. There's nothing wrong in the patterning part of my tool path. My patterning stuff is probably okay. Once again, there could be multiple factors to this, but I come in here and an easy fix for this is may I just go closest point to the chain instead of always traveling along the chain each path. That gives me still a clean contact pattern and a much cleaner tool tip pattern as well. In Mastercam 2025, we see some enhancements to simulation as well. The first one we're gonna take a look at involves the master model and a new way to define what your workpiece is in simulation. In this part, I have gone through my job setup and my master model is defined. This is important to use this new function. I also have fixturing and other things defined as well. Mastercam has traditionally used for your workpiece whatever is on your screen when you hit the simulation button, whether it be verify or machine sim. This could sometimes be problematic if you had additional geometry, maybe like covering areas you don't want your rougher to go into, or if you're doing some 2D work and maybe you were on wireframe. If I were to hit simulation now, that is what it sends to the simulation for our model. So I'm looking at simulation here. I have my workpiece and it's just this, all I have is the wireframe. The wireframe is split separately. You don't always need your workpiece in simulation, but there are some functions where it can be handy, especially compare. I often like to run compare after my simulation to compare the cut part against the workpiece. But if I don't have the right levels on or the, the right views on, I may not get very reliable results. New in 25, if I were to send the wrong data to simulation, I can now say, I have a workpiece field here, I can now say use my master model for the workpiece. And that is good for this one, but if I had done the other one when I sent to simulation, if I had all those cover patches on there, they would still be there. So I can also turn off so that it doesn't use the screen model. Now I can run my simulation I'd probably start with the workpiece off or transparent and have my stock on. 
Now I could run my simulation and now I could still do an accurate compare. 2025 also brings us an enhancement to the color loop function in simulation. This is the same part simulation we were just looking at. The color loop option can be found on the verify tab. I usually find that I like having this on. It makes each cut cut a different color into the model and in my progress bar down on the bottom it has the matching color. We have had color loop by operation, color loop by tool, new in 2025 we gained color loop by WCS. This part was machined in two setups so one of the setups is blue the other one here is cutting yellow. The green is the stock model of these uh, cuts originated from their uncut faces. This helps me quickly identify what cuts happened in which setup or more specifically which WCS which is typically a different setup in Mastercam and just another easy way to identify when and where things happened. In Mastercam 2025 users that have a local software license will now receive notifications when there's an update available for their license similar to when there is an update available for Mastercam. You can now click from this area and update your license. For instance, when you renew maintenance. This concludes our general and interface enhancements for Mastercam 2025. Make sure to check out our other Mastercam 2025 rollout videos. Thanks for watching.